Shocking dash cam video just released. Uh, a Texas woman shot to death by police last fall after a wild high-speed chase. Her family maintains there was no reason for her to die, has filed a lawsuit. And we do want to warn you, this video is disturbing. ABC Cecilia Vega has the story. It was a 20-mile chase that crossed state lines and hit speeds of 100 miles per hour. The whole thing caught on camera. Officers from Denver City, Texas, in hot pursuit all the way into New Mexico, chasing 35-year-old Amy Reyna, wanted for probation violations, including for burglary. But this morning, Reyna's family is suing police for the way this chase ended. The dash cam video that recorded every moment of last October's shooting obtained by ABC's Lubbock affiliate, KMAC. Watch as Raina drives off the highway and into an open field. Her tires blown out, she comes to a stop. Officer Ryan Taylor draws his gun and shoots into the engine. <laughs> Moments later, he fires again, straight through the windshield, hitting Raina, her car rolling to a standstill. She was pronounced dead at the scene. An autopsy found methamphetamines in her system. Taylor told investigators he thought Raina had a gun. You know, I fired, and she's still reaching for She's like, she, she's picking something up. She's grabbing something, okay. and that's when I fired that last round. But an investigation determined Raina was not armed, and Taylor also told investigators he did not have a clear view into her car when he fired. He remains on the job, but could face charges in the future. The video uh, of the shooting does not match his statement. If Officer Taylor clearly had a fear for his safety, he would have taken cover. A lawyer for Taylor told ABC News, Ryan protected himself and the other officers in the situation and was not responsible for the events that occurred. Amy Reyna was. And that's just a kind of a snapshot. Of what, uh, of what was happening. So in this case, you're really going to have to rely on what's on the videotape and what the other officers who were there, uh, what they observed. A high-speed chase that may have a very long legal road ahead. For Good Morning America, Cecilia Vega, ABC News, Los Angeles. Right now, Michigan State Police are working to help a family make sense of a highway tragedy that killed their loved one. Last week, 21-year-old Jared Ford was killed while merging onto U.S. 131 in Plainwell after a wrong-way driver slammed into his Mustang head-on. State police released the heart-stopping dash cam video showing the horrific crash on Tuesday. And after viewing that video, Ford's family says they're not convinced. Troopers did everything they could to prevent the crash. Ford's parents sat down with News Channel 3's Jared Worksma tonight to explain what they believe should have been done differently. He is live in Whalen. And Jared, what did Ford's parents tell you about this? Well, Kate, you can see in the video that uh, one of the troopers passes Ford's Mustang as it's getting on to US 131. And they think very simply that that trooper should have taken the time to stop and let him know, let Ford know about the danger that was ahead. And so what we did is we broke down the video from the two troopers vehicles Second by second, our hope is that it gives people a chance to judge for themselves whether or not more could have been done. The countdown starts with the call from dispatch. Trooper number one is six miles north of D Avenue doing an unrelated traffic stop. After warning the driver, he gets back in his car less than a minute and 30 seconds before impact. Trooper 1 drives 41 seconds at more than 100 miles per hour before going under the M89 overpass. At the same second, Trooper number 2 is on M89, just 9 seconds from the 131 on-ramp. Nine seconds later, Trooper 1 passes a truck merging on to 131 South, while Trooper 2 is entering the same on-ramp. Trooper 2 turns on his lights and accelerates, passing Ford's Mustang on the right, just 20 seconds prior to the crash. Just a second later, Trooper number 1 slams on his brakes and gives Trooper 2 his first warning 15 seconds before the crash. Trooper 1 whips around as the pickup flies by and radios this, just four seconds prior to the crash.
Now, because of the controversy sur surrounding this crash at this point, Michigan State Police is having everything go through Lansing headquarters. Here is a statement. It says, due to the urgency of this situation, the goal of responding officers was to stop the wrong way driver with the hopes of preventing a crash. Getting to the wrong way driver as quickly as possible was a paramount, was of paramount importance, excuse me, is the first priority of the responding officers. Now, obviously, Ford's family, his parents still do not agree with this assessment. They think that that trooper should have taken a moment to warn Ford of the danger that was uh, coming down the road. Now, they have obtained an attorney. They say they are trying to get answers right now. They are not sure what they want beyond that. They are simply reviewing their options. And, of course, we'll stay on top of the story for you and let you know of any developments in the future. For now, we're live in Wayland. I'm Jared Worksma, News Channel 3. Last month, the Yakima police initiated an intense manhunt for Gary Jack Gallagher. Gallagher was the target of the police department's fourth officer-involved shooting this year. Police fired on Gallagher after they say he tried to run over an officer with his car. Chris Luther was able to get a hold of some dramatic footage of the confrontation. Chris. Shane and Meredith, in the afternoon of March 14th, police attempted to apprehend Gary Jack Gallagher, who had a warrant out for his arrest. Gallagher had a history of running from the police, so they expected a confrontation, but they hoped it would never have come to this. Police, armed and ready, prepare themselves to take in a dangerous man. They approach slowly behind the cover of a car. All of a sudden, their suspect, Gary Gallagher, speeds away. Police video catches the explorer racing down residential streets. Police say while attempting to escape, Gallagher sped right toward officer Jonathan Cordova on foot, almost running him over. Three officers fired a total of 11 rounds at the car in defense. The chase was on. Moments later, officers sprint back to their cars and speed off in pursuit. They race through neighborhoods, blowing through stop signs. You can even hear one officer's desperation while searching for Gallagher. Hey guys, did you guys by any chance see a white Ford Explorer zoom through here? What is it? A white Ford Explorer. In China, can you run Russian? No. No? Alright, okay. Twelve minutes after the incident, the car is found less than a mile away from the shooting in the parking lot of the Red Lion Hotel with no sign of Gallagher. The back and side windows of the car are shot out and a bullet hole is found in the passenger side door. Gallagher escapes without a trace. According to documents obtained from the Yakima Police Department, investigators tracked Gallagher's cell phone to the 100 block of North 7th Street. The next night, the Violent Crimes Task Force moves in and apprehends Gallagher without incident. While in the back of the car, the dash camera picked up an emotional conversation between Gallagher and his girlfriend. You tried to run and you tried to rail the cops in my car. <laughs> Hey, baby, you never told me that. I didn't even know I did that. I didn't. It happened too fast. I love you. I love you too. Police then bring Gallagher to the station for booking, at which point the officer notices that Gallagher may need to go to the hospital. You don't have any bullet holes in you, do you? You don't have to answer that, but do you need any medical attention? How's that? Well, I got some in my knee. In your knee? Do you need to go to the hospital? After a couple days getting medical treatment, Gallagher is charged with assault. Go! Bringing the manhunt that started in this car to a peaceful end. The three officers involved in the shooting have since returned to the job. The Yakima Police Department is still investigating to determine if the shooting was justified. Live in the newsroom, Chris Luther, NBC Right Now. Thanks, Chris. New overnight, one person killed in a deadly crash that started with a police chase in Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas tonight's Brenda Washington is live near 63rd and Leavenworth Road. Brenda. Well, guys, I can tell you that Kansas Highway Patrol says a seven-year-old girl died in a crash that happened right here at 63rd Leavenworth Road. This is where the suspect was heading northbound on 63rd. The minivan was heading east on, uh, was heading uh, north, brother, on Leavenworth Road with the minivan with the mom and her three kids heading north right here at 63rd. Now, this started with the police chase about a mile from here on parallel. Now, when the suspect got here to 63rd and Leavenworth, they say he ran a red light, crashed into that minivan. That minivan, again, a mom with three kids inside, we're told all three kids under the age of eight 
were in car seats. Now, a seven-year-old girl in that car, Jasmine Rodriguez, she died. The suspect is identified as Tyrone Murphy, Jr. of KCK. He is 27 years old. We spoke with a man who says he was here and he heard that crash. It sounded like gunshots almost. And so we, I rushed out of my work. And whenever I got out here, it was just a car accident. But it was loud enough to where it sounded like gunshots. Now we're back here live at 63rd and Leavenworth Road. You can see the debris that's left over from that crash. We've got oil in the street. There's a debris. There's glass. There's also a traffic signal that's down. Now that suspect, again, named, uh, described, uh, or identified, I should say, as Tyrone Murphy, Jr. of KCK. He was also taken to the hospital to be treated for his injuries. I'm told he is now in police custody and this is still under investigation. Again, 8.30 last night, police were trying to stop him for a traffic violation when he was fleeing from police. Brenda Washington, KNBC 9 News. In a mall parking lot just moments ago, we learned the identity of the suspect. He is 30-year-old Michael Mayo. Here is what we know about him. He's got a rap sheet going back to 2002 that includes a number of drug charges, theft, and robbery. Now, since 6, we've also learned Mayo was in a motel parking lot in the 3300 block of Marvin D. Love Freeway at Highway 67 when police first approached him. He took off and finally stopped in that parking lot at Southwest Center Mall. This all played out on live TV this afternoon right here on NBC5. Chopper 5 was right above this from start to finish. Mayo stopped several times, allowing police to gather behind the getaway car before taking off again. The situation hit a fever pitch when Mayo got out of the car and put a gun to his head. He got back in the car. Then he exited the car a final time. We will not show you the deadly shots that ended his life, but you can hear just how many times police fired their weapons. Now, a lot of people witnessed all of this, including one man who captured it with his cell phone. NBC5's Ben Russell just spoke to him, and he joins us live now. Ben. Brian, that witness, one of several people who was here, trapped essentially in the Sears parking lot of the mall as this all played out. And he and just about everybody tells us they saw the same thing. Dallas police standing about where I am here with their guns pointed at this man who, if we follow the beam of my flashlight, he was in his car about right out there. And they say they saw him get out of his car, raise his gun at police, and they opened fire. This was the view through Nick Hall's windshield. Something just, I think it's unreal, cause you know, you hear it on TV and everything, but you never just witness it actually there. Nick and his friends weren't the only ones watching. The Southwest Center Mall parking lot was packed with witnesses. Very frightening, We're, we've been petrified. Cause it, it was like, yeah. Yeah. at one time. Yeah. It one sounded time. three shots though. Yeah, yeah pop, pop, pop. The exact number of shots fired is not yet confirmed, but this is. Dallas police tell NBC5 this situation started here, at the Dallas Inn, a few exits up Highway 67, when an officer approached the suspect's maroon car, believing he was smoking marijuana. After speaking with the officer, the suspect's girlfriend got out of the car, and he took off. NBC5 was there to see the girlfriend getting into a Dallas police squad car after the shooting. Officers drove her to the scene, and she'd watched this all play out, too. They kept saying he wanted his girlfriend, he wanted his girlfriend, but then the last time he got out the car and showed the gun, that's when they shot him. 
And again, late tonight, Dallas police did confirm this is the man who died, whose life ended here in the parking lot. This is Michael Mayo, 30 years old, most recently of DeSoto. That much is known. Exactly why this all played out may not be. Live in Dallas, Ben Russell, NBC5. Thank you, Ben. Now to a high-speed chase caught on camera in Marion County. Deputies say the driver reached speeds of 130 miles per hour after they tried to pull him over for not having on headlights. Take a look. You can see the driver just take off. Deputies go after him. At one point, the driver crashed into a ditch but was able to keep going. Deputies tried spinning out the car a couple times before finally bringing it to a stop. They arrested 31-year-old Travis Weaver, who they say was under the influence and driving with a suspended license. For you. First tonight, the chase drama that turned a quiet afternoon into utter chaos. And it all started as police tried to make a simple traffic stop. 7 Action News reporter Anu Prakash is live tonight in Ann Arbor. So what happened there, Anu? Well, Carolyn, a lot happened here. It all started as a traffic stop turned into a police chase and it ended in a crash. It all happened in just a matter of a few blocks and it ended here at a very busy intersection. Downtown Ann Arbor looked and sounded like the scene of an action movie Tuesday afternoon. Never seen anything like that around Ann Arbor. Only this was real life. The whole thing happened so fast. Unbelievable. Sam Cafe is a contractor who was downtown at the time. He heard a noise, looked outside, and realized it was a police chase. And the cops were coming down East Liberty, Main Street, nonstop. You can see from these pictures the aftermath of the chase that started near 5th and Washington. It began after Michigan State Police got a tip that two guys were bringing sizable amounts of drugs into the city, and one of them was a homicide suspect in Detroit. When they tried to make a traffic stop, those guys took off and police went after them. They say the chase lasted 40 seconds. It ended when the suspects crashed their Ultima while trying to run a red light here at the busy intersection of East Liberty and Main Street. The Ultima hit this Mazda with a teacher and a few students inside, but they weren't hurt, and remarkably, no one else was either. Investigators say the suspects tried to run, but as you can see, they didn't get far. Police say they found what's believed to be crack, heroin, and prescription pills in the suspect's car. But was it a good idea to pursue them? Michigan State Police say they made the best decision they could at the time. Uh, due to two hardened criminals, uh, one wanted for a possible homicide, a large amount of narcotics, it heightened the uh, need to apprehend. Our, our jobs are obviously inherently dangerous, and one problem that we encounter a lot is you have to make a split-second decision. If, if it wouldn't have ended as soon as it did, once it got into that really heavily populated Main Street area, we would have backed off, there's no doubt. Investigators know this chase could have ended much differently, but they, along with witnesses like Sam, are just thankful no one was hurt. You know, it's, you know the day before yesterday was pretty sunny, and people are were sitting outside actually by Lena, mm -hmm. they were, where they actually the car ended up being. So thank God no one was there yesterday, and uh, nothing major happened. It was just scary. I just was glad that no one was hurt. Um, I'm just glad that they caught him. Well, especially as the weather's been getting nicer, you can see how busy this intersection is of Main Street and East Liberty. Now, police tell me that they did find a third man in that Ultima. He was in the back seat, but at this point, they don't have any reason to believe he was connected to this drug case. The other two could be arraigned as early as tomorrow. Live in Ann Arbor, New Prakash, 7 Action News. I mean, everyone said it. I mean, it's usually so busy right there by campus. It is a miracle no one else was hurt, and thank goodness there weren't a lot of people out on the street. Yeah, absolutely. You heard Sam say that just the day before, there were a ton of people right in front of that restaurant, but yesterday, no one was hurt. Yeah. Now we head to a slow chase, a slow speed chase that landed a Chickasha man in trouble. It only ended when the man pulled into his driveway. Ah, oh, but wait, the story continues. Chickasha police have released the dash cam video of the incident. And News Channel 4's Shelly Mills caught up with a suspect who tells us why he refused to stop. Police say the initial call came from this Dollar General, a man reported to be intoxicated, got into his car and then drove away. You can see him look back at her and he just keeps on going. It was not too far away. The car was spotted by a Chickasha police officer, though the driver refused to stop. Despite lights and sirens running, he slowly continued, eventually pulling into his driveway. People think if they're close to home, if they just go ahead and make it home, they're going to be all right. But that's not true at all. You can hear as an officer demands the suspect, Justin Powell, get out of the vehicle. Please, 
You can also hear Powell refuse to cooperate. Get on the ground! I don't think so. Eventually, another officer arrives and Powell is taken into custody. The officer says she could smell alcohol and his speech was slurred. Powell was not willing to cooperate. Demanding over and over again, officers read him his rights. We caught up with Justin Powell at his house. Why didn't you stop when they tried to stop you on Country Club? Because I was going home. And I, I stopped. Uh, <clears throat> my car would have got impounded. Justin says he knew they were going to arrest him because someone at the Dollar General told him they were calling police. So why did they think you were drunk? Because they always think I'm drunk. He assures us he had not been drinking and tells us he thinks the whole investigation is, well... I think that's bull****. Shelly Mills, News Channel 4. Powell refused to take a sobriety test and was booked into the Grady County Jail on counts of driving under the influence, attempting to elude and resisting an officer. The traffic stop that sent two people to the hospital when this happened. Take a look. <laughs> A distracted driver plows into a police cruiser. Somehow, that officer walked away. KOCO's Morgan Chesky is in Midwest City to explain. Just the speed limit here on this stretch of air depot is just 35 miles per hour. Still, it was more than enough to give one Midwest City officer the scare of his life. It's the traffic stop seconds from turning into an accident. And Sergeant Brad Rummel realizes it right now. It's by the grace of God that he wasn't uh, seriously injured or killed from this accident. It happened last Thursday. It was more like a crunch, uh, like a quick crunch. Cell phone salesman Olin Johnson couldn't believe it the first time, much less the replay. That was amazing. I mean, I've never seen any footage like that. It's a story best told frame by frame. Here, when Rummel first sees the Chevy driven by Chrissy Jackson and the moment of impact from a distracted driver. She admitted she was on her telephone and that she was in a hurry to get where she was going and wasn't paying attention. Chief Brandon Klaibs credits training with saving his officer's own life. When Rummel parked, he turned his tires towards the curb. When she hit the back of the patrol car, it probably veered at an angle away from Sergeant Rummel as he was running in between the cars. Both cars involved were totaled. Jackson's been cited for reckless driving. All for not following advice, best said by the cell phone guy. We do advise, you know, to text later, drive first, you know, just to pay attention to the road. Quite the close call. And as for both of those drivers, we know they were taken to the hospital, but released later that day. In Midwest City, Morgan Chesky, KOCO, 5 News. Quite well, a wild ride lands one Cowboy County man behind bars in an officer's car in pretty bad shape. And that suspect took police on a chase through Huntington and then into a remote area. Troopers say they tried to pull over this man, 49-year-old Terry Garner, on Hall Greer Boulevard this morning. They say he refused to stop his truck and then just took off, leading police on a chase into a remote part of the county. When the officer tried to pursue Garner, the roadway caved in and his cruiser flipped into a ditch. Police were able to catch up with Garner, and he's now in the Western Regional Jail. Thankfully, though, that trooper wasn't hurt in the crash. High-speed chase through Bryan and Atoka counties ended with an arrest tonight. Police say it started in Durant after officers responded to a report of domestic abuse. They say when officers showed up, the man took off. They pursued him through Durant, then on into Atoka County, topping speeds of 100 miles an hour. Officers eventually caught up to him just south of Caney on Burntwood Road and Old Highway 70. The police say the suspect may have driven to his home. And there were no accidents and no one was hurt. The man's name has not yet been released. Well, a string of homes broken into a high-speed chase on I-96 and then a foot chase. But that's just part of the story. Three men have finally been arrested in connection with this series of burglaries in Livonia. Our Chauncey Glover is live this evening, and he talked to the neighbor who helped crack this case. Chauncey. Good evening, Ruth. Now, Don Paul is one of those neighbors who sits in his garage and watches everything that goes on in the community. Well, in this case, being a nosy neighbor paid off. 
Something not right, you know, something that looks fishy. 70-year-old Don Paul noticed some shady business in his Livonia neighborhood around 11 o'clock Monday morning. And I just kept watching and watching. While three men kept creeping and creeping. And when they drove by real slow, they went around the cul-de-sac. And when they came back, I noticed there was no license plate either. So I'm thinking, pretty strange. Paul follows his hunch. So we pulled in the party store at the corner, and we were parked there, and my wife says, here, here comes here comes the car out of the gas station. I said, well, then I noticed there was only one person in the car. And I know there was three when they came by me. So where were the other two? Police say they were kicking in neighbors' doors and robbing them blind. But look at here, Detective Paul was on the case. He called 911 as he watched the tricky trio make their next move. He and his dear wife in their Ford Escape were on their tracks until... All of a sudden, police department come flying by. A high-speed chase ensues. Police quickly stopped the car. One suspect was arrested on the spot, but his partners in crime made a run for it. They were found hiding in an abandoned house near 96 in Greenfield. They said they've been looking for him for two to three weeks, yeah. A big burglary case cracked, all thanks to Mr. Paul, who says he's proud to be a nosy neighbor. So I feel good about it. You know, this is our neighborhood, you know. we got to stick together. That's right. Good for you, Mr. Paul. And you guessed it. When police caught up with the getaway car, they found a ton of stolen property inside the car. I'm told the three suspects should be arraigned here in the coming days. We're live tonight in Livonia. I'm Chauncey Glover, Local 4. Second suspect. So those are there are only two suspects that exited the vehicle. 